What do you mean after the meditation when you say you did a good work? Whom do you mean? And just to encourage you. <laughs> just to, why, why, why not? Words, words of encouragement. I don't want you always so. be on the tiptoes and sometimes, yeah, I've done a good work. And the teacher said so. Great. No, no harm to feel good about yourself. So there must be somebody... <clears throat> yeah? Yes. So there must be somebody who can, can do no good work and who can... Yeah, of course. Uh, someone can just sabotage the work. Someone just pretending that they do work and they sabotage it. Let's not mix apples and pears, English proverb. The essence of the monistic discourse does not negate the need for spiritual work. And the concept of upayas, or the means, upaya means just that, means. And classically spoken of as four, there are four means. The, the means where no means employed in the highest form, you know, then we lower the mark, where some means and the still very high means, the high means, this is means of consciousness. And then if that doesn't work, we still lower it slightly, slightly, we work at the level of energy. So we work at the level of spiritual methodology. But not spiritual methodology itself, but at the level of that, what Shakti exemplifies and represents. And if that doesn't work, then we give it to the fourth type, which essentially introducing individual means. Individual, each to their own what will be applicable for each individual person. So from individual means, individually tailored, individually applicable to the energetic means and the means of transformation to the means where, which we work only from the level of consciousness. And no means need not be talked about at all because it doesn't require. If it's no means, why to talk about it? They are included there simply as a possibility because it exists. So what I'm saying is that if, if I said like, you know, well done, good work, right? If for someone it's just like an encouragement and a boost to the ego, fine. And for another it's an invitation for inquiry, that's also fine. No. Right? I'm not gonna like okay, this yeah. you know, half of the room, close your ears, I'll give the message to that half of the room. You know, because it's not applicable. You know? Or like good work, bad work. Mm. Okay. So No, I did not feel like that, that you mean a special person, but just was argue. To whom are you speaking? To I don't want to, to now start splitting the hairs. I'm speaking okay. to you. Always speaking to you. So I, I'm not addressing some ghost in the room. So everything, everything has its value. Each respective level of creation has its value. And that value to be respected it has validity at a given level. So we cannot walk around always, always speaking with spiritual uh, or very high or you utilizing very, very, very high categories. It's counterproductive. There has to be freshness in that. There has to be time when it's simply as it is. Grass is green. 
No, it's not green. It's the sap of Shiva. I can <laughs> see that. So the, uh, I'm not going to be get deluded through that delusional retina of my eyes. Even the sharpest new prescription, I can see that I'm not going to give in to that Maya that perplexingly diverts me from myself. And this is maybe helpful at some time, at some point. You see? When the painter looks at the grass, he sees something else. When the man who came to mow the lawn looks at the grass, he has a very different idea at heart. <laughs> Each to their own. You know, who are we to say that you know one is more preferable? I always have conflicts with gardeners. Wherever we stay, they come and cut every thing in it. And Amrita knows how I run after them and a you know, <laughs> cup of tea chase them out of the gardens, you know, with a stick sometimes. Don't you dare cut. <laughs> so, you need to find the balance in that, you see. Let me just give you a story, a little example. Okay. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was considered even in the circles as the, one of the greatest pandit and in, when it comes to Veda, when it comes to Vedic knowledge. And there was this uh, encounter that was written in Dr. Vernon Katz, introductory to the Brahma Sutras that he worked with Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And Maharishi gave his gloves, his interpretations on the Brahma Sutras. As those of you who don't know, Brahma Sutras are the authoritative text on Advaita Vedanta. It's considered to be number one scripture for, of non-duality, of Advaita Vedanta. And there were, you know, there were somewhere in Rishikesh, probably, and a place like at the banks of the river was covered, you know, and the food was served, and there were many different pandits, and there was lunch time, and so one of the pandits, as they were eating, exclaimed, "I'm eating Brahman," you know? <laughs> and everyone looked at Maharishi, what he would say, and Maharishi was like, "I'm eating rice." <laughs> Who's, who would say that, who would deny Maharishi to be Zen? Really Zen answer. Perfect response. Profound response. See? So many levels there. You know? So many, just... See how many levels there are. In that I'm eating Brahman, there is this Maybe even idea of superiority is added. You know, that pandit recognition that whatever he does, it's like... And Maharishi simply retours, I'm eating rice. Who said rice has less value? You see? It juxtaposes, it reevaluates, brings the value back at the respective level of creation and restores that order. The simplicity is brought back to it. You see? Very, very telling example. Yeah, and I see how quick my my mind jumps on on words I hear. Just Not just yours. It's, it's it's a habit, isn't it? It's a, there is a habit. And what is habit? It has a more specific term, vasana. There's no such thing. You know, yoga spe speaks and utilizes precise terms, so that. Uh, there is a, if you will, when precise term is even used, it's like using a particular tool for a particular purpose. Right? 
to undo certain screw, even a certain profile is required, you know, that fits that particular bolt. So the whole ordeal is so much easier, right? So, you know, just watch how skillfully these people work with the muschetti when they open the, and clean the coconut. You know, the right tool and how it's used, you know, can extract the juice from a very hard shell, which seems almost impenetrable. So, this, what we call habits, are nothing other than impressions operable. And the purpose of the spiritual discourses is at any given moment to create an opportunity when we can face and be faced with that. So therefore, like there's no need for straining to understand the spiritual discourse. If we even come with that idea of trying and straining, it almost we forget what it is for. It defeats the purpose. Mm. 